Having said that, it's easy also to look outside and to say, wow, we couldn't possibly do this. We're resource constrained, or we don't have the time, or we don't have the people or the talent. And what we try to do is look inside instead and say, you know, that essentially here's an amazing thing. If you blame others, what happens is that you give up the power to change. And we don't think that's right. If we think of our job, you know, to kuno Ram, you know, to basically heal the world. Um, then you have to do it yourself. You have to step up and you have to really pursue that if you, if you take that burden on. So we don't think that it's something, there's always an answer, there's always an excuse, but we don't think there's such a thing as good excuses. And so we also tell these very aggressive and very eager people that the world isn't particularly fair. Okay, we, we get that. But we can manage around those things. We can manage around that. And the trick is to uh, keep going under all of the circumstances. And so we don't accept excuses. This is not to say that we don't understand that sometimes there are necessary evils. But we don't confuse those. We don't say that this is the way you should do things. We just say this is the way you may have to do things for a period of time. And that's OK. Uh, but it's really important not to go on this slippery slope because as you settle, as you compromise, as you do things less than your best and push your heart and soul into it, then you discover it's a really slippery slope and things don't improve by themselves. Things that stand still go backwards in this world today. So at 1871, even though we believe in the First Amendment, we've recently outlawed the phrase, I don't know. <coughs> and here's why. Okay, it used to just mean you were ignorant. Today it means you're lazy. And the reason you're lazy is because today we have the tools, we have the information, we have the capacity to learn and to find out the answers to almost anything. And so when you come into a meeting and you say, I don't know, that's really sort of a sign of disrespect. That means you didn't do your homework, you didn't prepare, you didn't take the time to hold up your side of the bargain. And so you've wasted all of our time. And so we don't say we don't know. And what's so exciting about that is, in many respects, technology has changed the game to the good. It used to be we had this horrendous triangle. And we build out a tremendous amount of space and new, new facilities all the time. And contractors are forever coming in and saying, you know, the wall could be delivered on time or it could be straight. You know, or, or the wall could have just a few bumps in it, you know, but it'll be less expensive. And we're like, you know, guess what? Go sell that to somebody else down the street. We want it perfect and we want it all. And so today we don't have to sell. Today, technology's permitted us to have inexpensive solutions, speedy solutions that are good enough, and that's important to understand too. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be something that you can start with and grow over time. So uh, what's really great about this is we don't have to make bad choices. Even under the worst of circumstances, we can make smart choices if, if we take the time and the energy to do that. And so today what we say is if you're stuck compromising, if you're settling, if you're making bad choices, that means you didn't do your job. You didn't think hard enough about it. You weren't creative enough about it. Uh, you didn't exhaust the alternatives. And, and that's all part of the job if you want to bring about change. It's not easy. Actually, change is easy. Change happens in an instant. It's overcoming the resistance to change that takes a great deal of time. And also, it's important to understand that basically, in addition to sort of overcoming the resistance, people don't change of their own accord. They change when they have to. The trick is to make sure they understand that they have to change. Because you can either be ahead of the wave and propelled by it, or you can be overcome and overrun by the wave. Today, we think of ourselves as sort of running in front of a steamroller. And on any given day, you can beat it. But if you sit down, it will roll right over you. That's the rate of change that we're seeing today. That's, and it's accelerating. It's accelerating in, in amazing ways. But the other thing is we have uh, a remarkably high percentage of geniuses at 1871, by their own admission, certainly. Uh, and we try to explain to them that actually it's not about talent necessarily, it's not about creativity alone, it's really about effort, it's really about work. And that's the one reliable quantity 
and measurable thing that we think everything else can be predicated on. So we think that effort trumps even skill. And we do that because we know that over a period of time, that's what's brought about the most success. That's, what, that's what's made for the most success. And so, you know, we like to say that if we can't outsmart them, we can certainly outwork them. And that's a commitment that we make because it's easy to sort of sit around. Uh, it's easy to seize on explanations and circumstances and all this stuff. Or you can do what really good entrepreneurs do. And when that time reaches a point where you're running into a brick wall, the best entrepreneurs just double down. They don't stop. You know, they don't sort of get distracted or feel sorry for themselves. Uh, pity is, is not something that we sort of uh, deal with. Uh, they put their head down, and here's what happens that's so interesting. When you raise the ante, when you work even harder, you tend to discover a very interesting thing. There's a focus that comes with that, and there's an energy that comes with that that lets you walk through an occasional wall and uh, do things that you didn't think you were capable of. But if you apply yourself, and if you understand, by the way, that nothing happens by yourself these days. Everything that we do is dependent on a team and on the people around you. And uh, it's people that are, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, ultimately the only sustainable competitive advantage. It's not technology. Technology comes and goes. So, uh, bottom line, we can say it in very few words, and we just believe in this. It's not uh, a fantasy. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is nice to have, but work is what you can consistently rely on. So that's what we tell our entrepreneurs, and the truth is that today, each and every one of you is an entrepreneur because each and every one of you needs to be a lifetime learner. Each and every one of you needs to take the responsibility to expand your job to do what you can do to grow your capabilities. Um, and th that's exactly what sort of the definition of an entrepreneur is. So uh, the other thing is it doesn't get easier uh, ever. And you know, the only time that we find that people catch their breath is if they stop caring. And if they stop caring, what we tell them is they need to find something better to do, something that they care about. Because this is way too hard to start businesses and to bring about change. It's, way too hard unless you're really committed and passionate about it. And so uh, this is a quote of uh, most of the conference rooms at Facebook, which has changed our world in a number of ways, are uh, called 1%. And that's just to remind everybody that the journey is just beginning. And that's where we're at in terms of healthcare, too. I mean, we have 35 million people or so entering the system who've never been exposed to these things. They're going to absorb information in different ways. They're learn in different ways. And when I talk to anybody in medical or anybody in education, they say this amazing same thing. The only word that changes is care or learning. But what they always say is that the documentation and the paperwork gets in the way of the care or the education. And so technology does present the opportunities to clear those things out of the way and to make you way more efficient and to make you way more productive. And that's what business is all about. Innovation is not about inventing crazy new things. It's about making things a little bit better consistently. Save me time, save me money, increase my productivity. Those are the things that define innovation. And innovation is really what we're, uh, what we're all about. So 1% finish, no finish line, a tough road ahead. And yet, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And so that's what, that's what we're doing. So that's that's a little bit about sort of the entrepreneurial idea.